Well, hello. God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. And I pray that you're having a wonderful day. And as you can see, well, I'm yet in the sanctuary. And uh, I'm excited about inviting you to join us tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Thank you for tuning in on last, uh, uh, last Thursday night as we celebrated our district meeting. And I know that the Word of God blessed and challenged you. And I thank you for all of the, the, the text the cards, the letters, the communications, the emails, the phone calls. You are a tremendous audience. Thank you for your support. You have no idea, and perhaps you do, how much hearing from you means to us. And, and the thing that you have to say and the words of encouragement, never think that they fall on deaf ears and never make the mistake of thinking that I don't need to hear it because I do. Uh, no man is an island. We're all human beings. We're, we're in this together and it's always a blessing to hear from those who are on the Lord's side. Moses said, uh, whoever's on the Lord's side, come and stand over here with me. And those Levites move so quickly. Praise the Lord. And, uh, and the rest is history. And the Bible teaches, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Or better, let the redeemed of the the Lord say this, the redeemed are to speak up and talk about how good God is and we're to keep each other encouraged. Malachi said that they that believe spake often one to another. And you know, I've talked about from Acts chapter number, number of four and verse 28 and down and being let go, they went to their own company. And my friends, you, along with the members of the upper room church of God in Christ, make up my company. You, along with the members of North Carolina Third Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, Church of God in Christ, are certainly my company. And I praise God that we can fight the good fight of faith together and stand together shoulder to shoulder. Now, I'm excited about tonight. As a matter of fact, I'm very excited because we have something special for you tonight and it's going to bless you real good. I want to read a passage of scripture to you right quick. Uh, Josh, uh, Psalms, excuse me, Psalms chapter number uh, 24 and verse 6 says, this is the generation of them that seek him. That is, this is the group. This is the assembly. This is the group of people who are going to seek the Lord. And I want you to know, not everybody has backslid. Not everybody is trying to mix wickedness and weirdness and worldliness and ungodliness in their, with their Christianity and come up with some, uh, uh, man-made form of Christianity that has been watered down so much till you got all kinds of gods mixed in your Christianity as you attempt to serve the God of the Bible. And the God of the Bible is clear when he says, thou shalt have no other gods besides me. And uh, uh, part of their their theme is, uh, is Joshua uh, chapter number 24. And you know the verse, verse 14. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. That is serve Yahweh only. Our theme this year is serving God only, serving the God of the Bible only. Now this week is, is our uh, young adult weekend, our young adult weekend, and it will kick, kick off Tonight, yes, tonight, right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, I have a special guest who has come highly recommended to me. My first assistant and the, the youth pastor of our church, that mighty man of God who's been shaking up America. And I want you to know he's having much success getting pornographic books, books that are filled with incest and all kinds of wickedness removed 
lifted from shelves. Thank God, thank God, thank God. I speak of none other than the uh, elder John Amanchuku. What a tremendous job he's doing. He picked up the phone and gave me a call and said, Bishop, there's a man of God that I want to recommend to you who can stand flat footed, preach the word of God, who would do an awesome job. And, uh, and I said, who? He said, that man of God is one of our own in-house elders. Did you hear me? One of our own in-house elders, the elder Josiah Evans. And Josiah Evans, a young man who was born in this church, his mom and dad, they love Jesus Christ. They're proud members of this church. And we've seen this young man uh, be brought into the world and to grow up to be a man of God. He's a married man. He's a family man. And uh, he's just doing a tremendous job. He chairs our, our podcast for the young folk, Elder Josiah Evans is going to be speaking right here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Now listen, I know what you're asking. I know the question you're asking. Well, Brother Wooden, where will you be? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Now, there's a saying that says, if you get a chance to earn a living by doing what you love, you never work a day in your life. And I'm telling you, that's true with me. But how about this? I'm also a married man. <laughs> 46 years and counting, and I love the precious Pamela, and we are taking some time off. We, we are off. Somebody, I, I can tell right now, somebody said, well, where you at? We're somewhere behind the at, enjoying each other and just taking uh, this week off. I'll be back in the saddle uh, Sunday morning, but we're, we're resting. And, and she, she slowed me down. She says, honey, you got to take a break. And she's right. And I know that you appreciate uh, that uh, uh, that. Uh, uh, we have the sense enough to do this and, and we're just recuperating. But let me tell you, God is never without a witness and I have not left you without one. You will be blessed tremendously by the ministry of this young man. I am so godly proud of our youth ministry. These young, young people are serious about loving Jesus and serving Jesus. And, um, and many of the trends that's going on in the, in the youth ministries and in, and in the world today and in the church world today, we buck those trends because they're not scripture. We are convinced here at the upper room, and there are so many other believers who are convinced as well, that the God of the Bible is enough, that the Bible is right. That once you become a Christian, your role model, your superstar, your hero, the one you want to pattern after is the Lord Jesus Christ and those who have Christ operating on the inside of them. Oh, my. There are so many examples of godly people right here in the church who are doing it, getting it done. People who are successful in business, highly educated, successful in the field of medicine, Successful in the field of law, successful in the field of politics, successful people who are making it happen, successful people in the field of finance, people who are making it happen, getting it done in the name of Jesus. And yet accomplishing these things, successful in the field of music, in the field of production. You know, I talk about Gary all the time, a tremendous man of God, a dear friend, a role model to any young man. As a matter of fact, he serves as a role model here at the church, mentoring young men and pointing them in the right direction. And we thank God that we have great mentors, but none of our mentors uh, get in trouble for being uh, uh, perverts in disguise. For we hold a high standard and a high bar. And I praise God that God has sent us people that we can trust. People like Brother Garrett, people like uh, the elder Clarence Rocky Rayford, you know him. He's been over our music ministry over 30 years. And there's never been one accusation, never been one boy to come forward, never been one girl to come forward and say that he has sexually abused me or anything like that. And we haven't had those charges with any of our music. Musicians. We hold a high bar. We believe that you can serve 
serve the Lord and still be good at what you do and be amongst the best at it. I thank God for our cameramen, the people who work in our teleproduction department. Many of our young people uh, go in there and they train and learn how to use the equipment. We have no problems uh, in these areas because these people love Jesus Christ. They're saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Spirit and they love young people, love pointing them in the right direction. While I'm talking about this, the elder Sherrod McCoy comes to my mind. One of our great in-house elders right here who are doing, uh, during the year, we have a great big football camp and boys come from everywhere. And I thank God that elder Sherrod McCoy is one of those young men who are pointing young men in the right direction. Uh, just come to my mind, uh, evangelist Wanda Thomas, she has a ministry where she is uh, reaching out in the community, teaching and honoring and recognizing uh, young men, pointing young men in the right direction. I mentioned our youth pastor, Elder John Amanchuku. I don't know of a greater uh, man of God uh, to do the work that he is doing, mentoring our, our youth, teaching the word of God, uh, uh, preaching the word of God, being an example to young people, both near and far. Thank God for Elder Terry, who works with him in our youth department, Elder Curtis Terry. He's a preacher and he does a tremendous job and we're able to trust him 100% with our young people. Thank God for those parents. Uh, Gary, I can't say enough about the parents who bring their children and you trust us with your children. And I want you to know it's, it's wise to do so because you are doing, you are blessing them to, to learn how to develop uh, both spiritually and naturally. The interaction of kids, kids interacting with kids, kids interacting with kids who are like-minded, kids interacting with their own siblings, but beyond your siblings, you're going to live in the world. You're going to live in the world. You're going to have to eventually go to the school in the world, whether it's a Christian school or a private university or college. It's in the world. And you want to be ready for these things when you leave the reservation. We don't want to send them off and they're unexperienced with the world. Because let me tell you, that's doing a disservice. So what we do in teaching our young people, we're teaching them the word of God. We're teaching them to love Jesus Christ. We're teaching them to, to know the Lord, uh, to internalize their relationship with Jesus, to share Jesus with others, but also to be able to function in this present world. Brother Gary, I think that's very important. Jesus says, I pray, Father, that you not take them out of the world, John's Gospel, chapter number 17, but that you keep them in the world and keep them from the evil of the world. So the Lord is blessing us to raise up a group of young people. We're not the only ones, but I'm talking about here to raise up a group of young people who are fired up. We want to see you go to college like the, uh, uh, like the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, Williams sisters and go to college and go and, and matriculate, get your degree and all that and come back and still love Jesus Christ. Like Crystal Latina Amanchuku. Man, you know, I almost said wooden. Praise the Lord. But she was a wooden when she went to college, graduated from college. She got her learning, but she didn't lose her burning. So many have, have come our way as a result of their experience in college. Saved, such Keisha White. Saved, such Tanya Listen to me, so many saved and loved the Lord and went to school and did not lose their walk with Christ. The Thompson kids uh, uh, who matriculated through college and they're back in church serving in the Lord's church. It's such a rewarding thing to see the kids go to school and they come back and embrace the Lord God of the Bible. P young people getting married and they're marrying fellow Christians. And they're starting their families. Our baby section here at the church. <laughs> I got to tell you about that sometimes. Because sometimes, you know, when, the, when I began to preach, that's when the kids get noisy. They're talking back to me. 
And uh, it's the most amazing thing. And they're, they're, I call them Kojic babies. They're born in the church and they're growing up in holiness. And they're, 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 they're accustomed to the sounds and the language of the sanctified church, even before they develop language. <laughs> <laughs> and look, look, this is what this is what amazes me because their parents are born again believers all while mom is carrying the baby. You know, the baby can hear. So all of the kids are familiar with my voice. You know how the little the little newborn, how you can tell that uh, you, you, you've gained their attention. They're familiar because they've heard the preaching of the gospel over and over and over while developing in their mother's womb. Praise God for moms and dads who recognize the importance of these things. So, yes, we are raising a generation of young people who are seeking the Lord, who love Jesus Christ. It's, it's Young Adult Weekend, the generation that seeks and serves the Lord only. Now, I want you to join us tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for youth seeking Jesus. Praise God. Young Adult Weekend. And the weekend is being kicked off tonight by the elder Josiah Evans. Friday night. Look at this. Focus Talk. I know I'm going a little long, but you got to get this. Focus Talk this Friday night. Food. Uh, Topics of topic of discussion, games, fellowship. And when they go into the discussions, they go deep and they talk and they're honest. And uh, I praise God for that. And you don't want to miss it. And here's the invite. Wear your favorite college apparel or colors. Wear your favorite college apparel or, uh, or colors. Colors that match your college. Now, here at the Upper Room, we have made no secrets about this. We do not believe that there is a divine two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nor nine. We believe in the divine one. So when we call for college colors, we're not calling for sorority or fraternity colors. We're calling for the colors of your college. And uh, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that because uh, thank God for a good, a good, thank God that we live in a country where people can go to college and, and get a good education. But you don't have to, when you go to a college, you don't have to pledge to a God. You don't have to get into a secret room. You don't have to go through uh, 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 some rituals and, and affix yourself to a God. And these people know they get mad with me when I talk about it, but they know they pledge to a God. They know that with every one of these fraternities and sororities, there is a entity that they call by name. And many of them know many of the ladies have lost their virginity. They've done all kinds of things that they'd rather not talk about now. And praise the Lord, it's not anybody's business. Uh, but uh, some of the things uh, that keep them in secrecy is uh, uh, self-incrimination. Uh, Nothing keeps your mouth shut like fear of, uh, you know, self-incrimination. But listen, come out. Let Jesus set you free. Praise God. He'll wash your sins away and, and use you and keep you. So we're excited about this Friday night. Focus talk. And then Saturday is evangelism and fun. And look at this. Look at where they're starting at. It's just like Upper Room. 9.30 a.m. of all places. The abortion clinic, young adult, uh, going to the abortion clinic, they were going to have a young adult brunch, and uh, I'm excited about that. They're going to try and save unborn babies. They're not going to the clinic to campaign <clears throat> like a certain politician did the other day. They're going there to campaign for the lives of the unborn. Isn't it amazing today how we're being lied to? These people lie and call abortion of all things health care. I mean, this is the age of lying. And, and the more we get accustomed to lying, lying like uh, a lie, like a same-sex marriage, that's a lie. I don't care what the Supreme Court says. Lie like transgender. It ain't nobody got no two genders. You're either a man or a woman. That's a lie. We're lying now and calling abortion 
health care or reproductive rights when there is no reproduction in abortion whatsoever. Abortion, by definition, is just the opposite of reproduction. It stops reproduction. And yet these people lie to us because they know they can't sell it telling the truth. Thank God that these young people are going to stand for the lives of the unborn. And yours truly will be back here, if it's the Lord's will, uh, Sunday preaching the word of the Lord. Now, I've gone long today, but this is so important. I'm excited uh, uh, and uh, and we need this. Listen, listen, I got this notification. Look at what's going on. Washington schools, Gary, I'm, I'm wrapping it up, Gary. Washington schools to teach LGBTQ history starting in 2025. <laughs> Now, with everything that's going on up there in Washington State, this is what they're getting ready to uh, add to their curriculum in 2025. Olympia, Washington, a bill mandating LBGTQ history education in Washington schools was signed into law uh, by Governor Jay Inslee using the diversity equity and inclusion framework as basis. Senate Bill 5462 was filed in uh, 2023 with the intention of extending inclusive learning standards and instructional materials in the state's public schools. Edu education officials need to create a curriculum that covers the lives and accomplishments of LBGTQ individuals. <laughs> In addition to the history of persons from different racial, ethnic, and religious backgrounds. Now these people, there's a movement in America to, uh, America to homosexualize history. You need to know what's going on. And Brother Wooden is going to tell you. They're trying to homosexualize history. After a while, they're going to tell you George Washington was a homosexual. They've already claimed at one point Abraham Lincoln was a homosexual. Praise the Lord. What they really want to do, and some have said it, they're trying to say that Jesus was a homosexual. And, oh, homosexuality, this homosexuality, this person was, that person was. Someone called me one time and said, hey, hey, Wooden, homosexuality has been around for a long time. You ought to let it go. Well, now, if we, if we go by the age of a sin, uh, then we need to get, we, we need to let, we, we need not preach against adultery, fornication, or any sin at all. Because the Bible already tells us that there's nothing new underneath the sun. So just because it's been around for a long time, that doesn't mean that, uh, that it's, it's right. As a matter of fact, I know it has been around for a long time. It's been around since Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. It's been around since the evil that took place in, in the days of Noah. Of course, uh, sin has been around for a long time. All sin has. But these sins, they've made it into law. And now in Washington state, and it will probably spread throughout the uh, uh, public school system. Look at me. I'm getting excited. I'm going to sweat. Can you tell it? Oh, my. They're going to. Or, or, now they're going to teach. Uh, the, can you believe this? LGBTQ history. I wonder how that's going to be taught. I wonder how. Uh, that will be taught because I'll tell you what you can't do. You can't teach it fairly. You can't teach it in a unbiased way. We don't teach heterosexual history. We just teach history. So now you're going to try and convince our young people with their minds full of mush, their brains are still developing Oh, we need to pray for Washington State. Great preachers up there. Let's pray. Church folk up there, let's pray. Don't you be so silly as to fall for this. Well, this is what my political party is for. Hey, man, your relationship with Jesus Christ has to outweigh any political party. I don't care who's behind this. Doesn't matter to me whether it's a Democrat or a Republican. Whoever's behind this, it's a wicked agenda. And the saints need to rise up.
And if they don't, if they if they're going to teach this in public school, you may need you may need to go down to just driving one car and, uh, uh, you know, get rid of the Netflix and all of the fancy packages you have uh, on your cable there and uh, maybe go out and eat at a restaurant once a month and cut costs elsewhere and put those children in a private Christian school where this kind of garbage is not being taught because if you drop your kids off five days a week or let the bus pick them up and they get this garbage put in them, it's going to change them, especially if when they get home, you can't refute it or you won't. You're busy. You're working, whatever. Then when they go to church, the, the, saint, the, the people are shouting and dancing and, and speaking in tongues and enjoying the Lord. But they're not addressing issues like these. This is deadly. This is uh, wickedness. It's, it's wrong. Did you see what happened the other day? I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I know I'm going too long. But what in the world has happened to Planet Fitness? You know, as a gym, I wouldn't be caught dead in anyway. You know, you can't holler. You, you can't, I mean, you got, to, you, got to, you, got to be, you got to be like a church mouse in a gym. I mean, by their own commercials, they don't, they wouldn't want people like me in there anyway. You know, you're going to go and lift some weights and by God, get it done. Rawr! The buzzers go off. Turns out they had a man in there <laughs> and this guy he claims to be a trans woman is a fella. And he's all in the ladies um, locker room and, and the woman who has something to say about it. How about this? Planet Fitness put her out. Gary, I got to go. It's messed up. Listen, tune in tonight. And if you're in the area, bring your young people. Be a part of the service. Pamela and I are resting uh, and enjoying each other. I, I Look, I love her and I thank God for my wife. We have a wonderful time together, a wonderful relationship. And uh, we are getting a little R&R. But we'll see you Sunday. God bless.